I am Mary of Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave. I'm coming to you live from Central Ohio. And um, something special is happening this Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday will mark my 13 years as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And um, I had no idea when I purchased that starter kit, which was actually quite expensive back then in comparison to now, and we didn't get to pick all the products. It was not customizable like ours is today. But anyways, I had no idea. Um, I wasn't planning to build a business, um, but I think I just fell in love with the people I was meeting and um, just enjoyed having this creative outlet and it just grew from there. So I'm excited. Wednesday is um, 13 years. I have something fun planned for you today. Um, and I'm going to tell you right up front, this was not my idea. I have seen it before, but it's been a long, long time. Um, but last night I happened to catch a quick video that um, my friend and customer, Marty Blair posted on her profile, Facebook profile. And I was like, oh, that's wonderful. I'm going to show that because I think it's such a fun um, and easy technique. Anybody can do it. And I think you're really going to like it. So let me flip my camera around. While I'm doing that, if you would please share this Facebook Live, I would appreciate it very much. I saw in the comments. Um, that some of you have already shared, and I appreciate it very, very much. Vicki Rhodes, thank you so much. She says, just discovered you a couple weeks ago and have loved watching your videos, have learned so much. Oh, Vicki, thank you for sharing that. I'm so glad you told me. I love knowing that um, my videos and the work I do is helpful and inspiring and fun for the people who are watching and following me. So thank you for that. Okay, I told you you would need a card base. So this time I'm using Very Vanilla. I told you a stamp set and I'm using the leaf images. In Marty's um, video yesterday, she did a fall card. Um, I believe the stamp set I'm using is different than the one she used last night, but this is one of our newest autumn stamp sets, Gorgeous Leaves, and it has a wonderful die set to go with it. And then I think I'm gonna pull a couple of the sentiments from the Enjoy the Moment stamp set. Now, what I'm going to, no, I wanted to lay out a piece. I was going to use white scrap paper and I thought, well, that's going to reflect too much and I don't want to do that. The one thing I forgot to tell you that you need is some washi tape. And I'm starting with a piece of just black cardstock and this will end up being messy and you're going to throw it away when you're finished. So um, just make it, I would do it from cardstock, not paper. But I made mine three inches by seven inches. And I want it long enough that it's going to, going to go past the left and right side of my card front. So I'm going to tear this right down the center. And I do want there to be some curves and things like that. And then I'm going to tape this down in place with some washi tape. I don't want any of this to move on me while I'm um, adding ink and blending, things like that. And what you're going to want to do is you're gonna have a space in the middle. So I'm trying to I guess I could have used a, a piece that's not quite, wasn't as big as three inches, but I'm, I'm one of those, um, rather have, oops, I wanted to do this, rather than have, I guess you could do it either way, rather have extra than not enough or something like this. So 
I'm going to just match it up to the end and then adhere it with my washi tape so nothing moves. Okay, I have a trick for always being able to find the end of my washi tape and I didn't do it. Typically when I'm pulling washi tape, instead of just ripping it off like that, I kind of turn it to the side, press my thumb down and then pull it off because then it has like a little ridge there. Can you see that? And that's easy to find. And then I wanna do the same over here. And you can decide, do you want it to go like this? Or do you want it to go like that? Can you see how I'm moving one of the strips and it changed, maybe I'll do it this way. And it changes um, the shape of that torn strip. Let's do it this way first. We'll change it for a, a different one. So we're gonna make a couple cards today. My plan is to do three cards. And be sure and comment because somebody will be um, receiving a card I make. So I decided I'm going to do a fall card. And so I've picked three fall colors. And you can use two. I believe in Marty's um, video yesterday, she used two colors. And I'm using Daffodil Delight, Pumpkin Pie, and Cajun Craze. This is what I pulled out. I think these will go nicely together. I don't know for sure that I'm going to use all of them. I'm just gonna kind of play. And this is a good thing to do. And you know, you can do this with any colors and any um, stamp set that has some small images for you. Or um, for example, like, if you have a stamp set for birthdays and there might be a balloon and confetti and a party hat, things like that, then I would pick colors that go with the birthday theme, bright and fun, um, but it works basically for anything. But I'm going with a fall theme today. So I've got my blending brushes. And if you don't have blending brushes, I suggest you get them. And what I like about them is they're super easy to use and um, you get a softer look with your blending than you do say with sponge daubers or stamping sponges, things like that. And it comes in a pack of three, I believe they're $12. Now you can see mine are stained, but they're clean. And they actually pick up very, very little ink from your ink pads. Um, so they don't get as dirty as you think. I don't wash mine very often. I'll show you what, I'm do, what I do when I'm all finished with them. Now, if I'm using different colors, I typically will um, use the different brushes just because it's easier for me to work that way rather than clean, take the time to clean one off, move to the next color, clean it off. And you see what I mean. So I just kind of swirled around. I'm not pushing. I'm really just swirling it around the ink pad. I always start off on scrap paper. And then I move to the area that I'm blending. Do you see how I started on that black on that scrap paper and moved? I'm going to scoot this up just a bit. There we go. And now I'm going to move to the pumpkin pie. Ooh, this would be pretty technique um, if you're making a sunset, something like that. So go off and then on. Oop, that was a little heavy in that spot. I think I pushed instead of swirled, but that's okay. It'll come out a little different each time. And then I'm moving to Cajun Craze. Let's start off. Just like that. I think I'll add a little bit more yellow. I want to 
it just a little bit brighter. Again, if you would like, you can just do two colors. Oh yeah, that makes a difference. Now I'm going to do some stamping. I'm using, once again, the gorgeous leaves. I'm spacing out my blenders here so I don't mix them up and contaminate the ink pads with wrong colors and things like that. I've pulled out several of the stamps from the set. But what I'm thinking is when I look at this, I think it's a little large, but I might be able to stamp just part of it in there. Um, I really like these. I might even use those tiny leaves or this one. So you can do whatever you like. Um, you know, just go with whatever you want to do. And I wanted a green. I think I'm going to do garden green. You could stamp with all the same colors if you want. You can pull in some different colors. I'm going to use garden green for this. I'm just going to stamp off. Yeah. And I'm going to use Cajun Craze for this little leaf. I think that would be fun. And you can see why you want some scrap paper underneath as well, because I am going off the edges of the card. So in addition to using that piece of scrap paper to um, hold your torn paper in place and your card in place, you want to use it because you are stamping off the edges as well. Um, I feel like I want something more. I'm going to do another green leaf here. Yeah, that's better. And then I think I'm going to pull in a soft suede. And I'm going to use this um, splotchy, what do you call it? I don't know what to call it, splotchy pattern, the splotches. And I can even stamp off, meaning I stamp once and then re do the repeat stamping, but don't ink it up again. You know, you can do that if you wish. You can space it out more. You can even go over the leaves with that if you like. And you can have more or less of that splotchiness. So then you're going to pull this out and this is what you have for your card front. Now, isn't that pretty? I love it. Marty, by the way, if you've been on um, Facebook Lives with me, when she's been watching, a lot of times she'll participate and I'll say, oh, there's Marty, my artist friend. Um, that's who it is. So if you remember talking me talking about my artist friend, that's who I'm talking about. All right, so let's add a sentiment. I think... I will use, oh, I haven't even put all these together. You can see I used some, so it didn't add all the labels. I'm going to do this one, a little note. I'm gonna stamp that with the garden green. You know what, let me make sure to see if I can stamp straight on here. There we go. Yep, pretty good. Okay. One thing I should have done was pulled, I don't know how well you can see this, but do you see some of this? I think that's because I slid my card front out from under the uh, scrap paper, that black that had some ink on. Um, but 
I should have lifted that black paper off. So I'm gonna remember that for the second time. But in the meantime, look what I'm gonna do. We have this pretty gold ribbon. I could use that. Um, I could add some embellishments as well. I'm trying to decide, I don't know. I don't know, I'm gonna put this aside, but you think about that with me. Oh, look at these. Now these might be really pretty. This is the Holiday Rhinestone Basic Jewels, comes in, I think it's five or six dollars a pack, but it comes in the five colors, and each color has um, three different sizes, so you can use it for all kinds of things. But look at this. I'm trying to think, do I want to use different colored ones? I think I will. This seems a little funky because I'm trying to cover up my spots. And I'm not liking the way it's going. Okay, my initial thought, like I said, should have just been, you know, follow my first thought. Set it aside for now and think about it, Mary. Okay, so let's make some more. This time, I know I want to use the ribbon. I'm going to make it pretty much the same way but I want my gold ribbon to um, come all the way around my card front. So I'm going to make it this direction. I've cut four and a quarter by 11 inch. So I've cut it the opposite way as I did for the first card. Be sure and press, um, crease that fold nicely. We're going to do the same thing here and lesson learned, do not slide. Watch and learn from me, don't make my mistake. I don't know why I did that even, because I, practicing, I didn't do that. Oh well. So I'm going to now, once again, set my scraps in place. And doing it this way, you can make very thin torn strips with your blending, or you can move them further apart and have a wider strip. Or you can move your strip lower or higher, whatever you like. Katie, I think if you use the Stamparatus and you had um, the, ma the uh, magnets placed, it should hold that down just fine. What a great idea. I never even thought to pull my Stamparatus out for this. But yes, it, you definitely could do it that way. And I am going to move this down this time. And you know what? I think I'm going to turn it the other direction. Remember how we said at the beginning, you can turn it different ways, but I kind of like the other, but I'm going to try it this way. So this is a, a quick and easy way to make cards. Kids would love doing this with you. Um, it's good for beginners, experienced stampers, everybody. And it makes a lot of cards quickly and with limited supplies too. So I like that. And I'm just gonna do the same combination of colors. So I'm starting with daffodil. With the blending brushes, you really don't need to press hard. It's more about using that circular motion and moving across. Now, when I did the pumpkin pie on the other card, I didn't go over my scrap paper enough before I added it. You know, I think I just put that in the, did I just put that in the daffodil? It looks like I just put, yep. Yeah, looks. I was gonna say, it looks like I just put that in the daffodil. Did anybody catch that? <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to add 
the Cajun craze at the bottom again. And we're going to get a completely different look because we moved that torn paper around a little bit. And on this one, I might want to put more orange and red. So I'm going to do some extra swirls with the Cajun craze. I guess Cajun craze isn't really red. But it's showing up a little more red on here, I guess. I'm going to add some more pumpkin pie. Since I'm putting that pumpkin pie in the middle, did you notice I um, worked on my scrap paper first and then I worked off from the sides and went down the middle? And we'll just brighten up that yellow a tad bit. Oh, if you're making a sunset card or a sunrise card or what else, a beach card, like the beach sky, that sort of thing, this would be a great technique to use. You could even do it on a scrapbook page. Just use, you know, longer pieces. Okay, I got the splotch there. And you know why? Because I pressed it down this time. <laughs> But I, I do like, I think it was Joyce Wilhelm, yeah, she said you could use the splatter stamp to cover over the mistake across the top lightly. Yes, because there's nothing wrong with us doing more stamping, right? Oh, why did I even take that off? I'm talking too much and... Okay, should I tell you I've been up since 3.48 in the morning? I woke up with a bad headache and I could not get to sleep. So I ended up just getting up and I started um, working and I am all of a sudden feeling it now. Like a nap is definitely going to be in my afternoon. It's going to have to be because I might not make it otherwise. Okay, I'm going to change things up a little bit and I'm going to use this larger maple leaf stamp in the Cajun craze. I just love fall and leaves. I don't know, and fall colors, ugh. And did you ever notice if you take pictures in the fall, outside pictures, it doesn't even matter what kind of day it is. They always turn out beautiful and have great colors. This direction. And then... I think I will add some of the green. I like that brightness the green brings. You can make your leaves as close or far apart as you like. And I have these itty bitty leaves and I think I am going to use those, but I wanna use the, I'm gonna fill them in with, um, soft suede. And I'm doing this instead of the splotchy on here. So you could do both, I'm sure. Just whatever you think. And you're not going to get perfect edges like this leaf here. Can you see that? How it's not the perfect edge of the leaf, but that's okay. That's part of the um, creative and artistic part from using the torn paper. And I think that's pretty just as it is. And let's see, what do I wanna put on here? This one is about friendship. Let's see how that, no, not quite. So actually looking for something longer. What does this say? Good things are worth waiting for. Yeah. Enjoy the moment. Happy birthday. Let's do, where's that enjoy the moment? You know what? I don't want to stamp this until I put my ribbon on. This gold metallic ribbon, super shiny, um, is in our holiday catalog, of course. 
I am going to tie a bow with it. I also did not have coffee this morning and I don't drink a lot of coffee I have like one small cup a day um, but I was out of my half and half and I, I cannot do black coffee and I'm out of milk too oh I guess I had some almond milk I could have done that but yeah I was like I don't want to drink it black so I just skipped it which is probably better <laughs> If I'm going to need to catch an hour or so nap this afternoon, since I was up so ridiculously early. Remember, too, that when you take your ribbon around the entire card base, if you just curl it a little, you can slide that up and down. I didn't really like where it was. I wanted it just above the ink just above the blending. And I think I like that right where it is. And now I'm going to add my sentiment down here. You know, I'm gonna change up the color for the sentiment. How about if we do the Cajun craze for the sentiment? Yes. There, what do you think? Do you think this is a technique that you would try? Katie says she hopes I do a, a class with leaves. I'm planning to do a class with the stamp set, um, but that still is several weeks out. I don't have anything um, designed with that just yet. Okay, let's go back to this. And I'm just going to take Joyce's advice and use that splotchy stamp. I'm gonna stamp off because I want it kind of light. Oh, I could have used it even lighter. I'm gonna kind of balance it out by putting some splotchy down here. I think if I do something like this, Okay, now does it look like I kind of intended that? I don't know. What do you think? Is it a keeper or is it a trasher? You tell me, is it a keep or a trash? I am going to jazz this up just a little bit with those um, holiday rhinestones, like I said. One stuck to the other package. And I go up here. You know that, Joyce, that was a good idea. It works. What do you guys think? Oh, you're saying keep it. Love the swatches. Okay. <laughs> you know what they say about mistakes. There are no mistakes in stamping, just opportunities to um, create and embellish. <laughs> and it worked today, didn't it? With your help, of course. Okay, now I love it. Now, now I'm liking it. All right. And because you guys are so helpful and so kind, oh, you're saying keeper in capital letters. Okay, I am going to give away both of those cards, but let's do one more. Um, this time, I'm going to make a note card. Now, the note cards, again, if you've been with me for a while, you've heard this before. If you're new, um, this is probably new to you as well. I believe that one of the most overlooked products in our catalog is our sets of 
note cards, and envelopes. They come in both white and vanilla. And in each package, you get 20 of the card bases, pre-cut, pre-scored, and 20 of the envelopes. These are mailable. Sometimes I think if people do notice them, because they're smaller, people think they cannot be mailed in the US. They can. This is the smallest size card or envelope that the US Postal Service accepts. So I use it a lot. Think of it, if you went out to buy a package of note cards, you know how they would come in the box with the clear um, top? This, that's what this is. It's the same size. So I use these a lot. Great for thank you notes, great for teacher gifts. Teachers are always needing um, notes and sending notes. So this is what I'm going to use. Now I'm going, because I know I have ink on those, I'm going to start, I should have checked my fingers. No, my fingers are clean. Um, because that's possible to do, picking those up that I got ink on my fingers. Let's do something completely different. Um, and we'll see if you like this. You know, I think I'm gonna switch to white though. I was gonna do another fall card and I thought, no, nope, we need to see something different. So I'm going to use white. I would like somebody to name three colors that go together, and I want them to be bright and cheerful colors. They don't have to be fall. We're going to make a birthday card. So I'm looking for bright and cheerful. Oh, Katie, what a good idea to make stationery, note cards, things like that. Greeting cards and give them as gifts. I love that idea. I do that too. Probably have it in a couple of years. Grape, Freesia, and Highland Heather. Ooh, that would be pretty. We can even, they don't necessarily have to be colors. They just blend together. I mean, what do I want to say? Like a series, you know, dark, medium, light. Um, but I do like that. So what did you say? Grape, Freesia, and Highland Heather. Okay, we'll go with that since you were the first one to respond. Mm. And we don't even have to put them in order. Um, I think it's kind of cool to do it that way. So let's try it. So again, I'm going to need to start with some scrap. This is just long enough. Um, and I'm gonna cut this down because it'll be easier to see if I cut this down, how I want to place it and what width I will get on the card front. So I'm, I've made this one two inches wide. The other was three inches, but we've got starting with a smaller base and going from there. Okay, so I'm just going to tear it right down the middle. Grab my washi tape. You can go onto your card base a little bit if you want to help hold that card base in place as well as the torn scraps. Okay, now this is what I'm going to do different. Oh, this I need to show you. Um, when you're using the blending brushes and you want to stitch, uh, uh, you want to switch to another color, 
you can clean off your brush like this. Just keep swirling around until it looks like the ink is out. Kind of like when we use our blender pens, we get as much of that ink out as we can just by rubbing it back and forth. Same idea with these or our aqua painter, same idea. These bristles are super fine. You, you know, if you clean them like this really well, um, you don't necessarily have to wash them a lot. The other thing is you do not want to use these wet because you will not get the same effect at all. Oh, I'm seeing some good col color combinations coming up. So we might have to try some more. Now you can see I'm still getting some color out of this. And it just looks like it's just about out. And I'll do the same thing with the yellow. Get as much color out as I can. And really that's why I bought a second package of the blending brushes. Because I think what I'll do is after today's live i'm going to wash these and again they will stay stained and that's fine but they'll be clean i let them air dry don't use any soap on them just cold water um and then i just let them air dry on a towel but after i do that then i thought i would mark on them you know reds yellows orange greens purples blues because that way when i grab it um you know it makes it easier to just not have to clean them as often, or to worry about sticking one with a very dark color into the yellow ink pad, things like that. Oh, Joan, I have heard of that. And aren't they the softest thing? I'm telling you people, these are the softest brushes you will ever use. And yes, I have heard of people. So Joan, no, it is not something to laugh at. I, I get you, girl. Okay, I'm only going to blend with two colors. This is what I didn't tell you. I'm going to pull my happy birthday stamp. And again, you could do this with, you know, if you've got balloons or party hats, confetti, anything like that. Since I don't have my label, I'm, I want to make sure I know what direction this is going. And I'm just randomly going to stamp happy birthday on here in the darkest color. So you, and this will kind of show you that, um, and again, nothing's perfect. And I typically do the blending first but it's not a big deal if you decide you're gonna do it later, something like that. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to now take my fresh freesia and pick up some of that pretty color. Does anybody have fresh freesia? I didn't think I was going to like it. I also didn't think I would like pale papaya, but the more I use each of them, the more I do. And when you're using the same color or same kinds of ink, it's really okay for you to stamp and then blend or blend and then stamp. So do whatever you're comfortable with. But doesn't that fresh freesia look pretty with the letters in gorgeous grape? All right, let's add some Highland Heather. Highland Heather is my favorite of the purples, I have to say. Let me move this. We're not getting quite as much color variation as we did with the fall colors, but that's okay, right? I'm going to go back through with the fresh freesia a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm thinking I need it like another splash of color. How about All right, this has a party hat in it. And I have not used the stamp set. As you can see, it's called Little Delights. It has a nice um, a nice set for different holidays and birthdays. So pretty versatile. And I want a color that's going to kind of pop on here. So how about... Mm, I wonder how I'm thinking magenta madness. Any have any have ideas? Barb, you don't have any colors yet. Oh girl, we need to get you some colors. You do have fresh freesia, love all the new colors. Awesome. So I'm thinking perhaps Bermuda Bay on there. We could do something bright. Ooh, let's try the mango. Oh, Ruby said daffodil. Yep. <laughs> I think we're kind of thinking along the same thoughts. I was trying to pull out some colors I hadn't used yet. This might be a little dark, but that's okay. Because you're still going to see these. And with this, you can even go. Isn't that fun? I love it. And just to add to that, I'm going to put another happy birthday um, just right down here. Make sure I have it the right direction. And I use Gorgeous Grape. I could put it up here too. Now I'm going to put it here. So I have that. I don't know. These same rhinestones, I think, will work on this card as well. Isn't that funny? And here it is. But you get the idea. You know, if you're doing something with Christmas, um, you know, do reds and greens or red, yellow, and green, something like that. Here. Remembering my rule not my rule, the rule of odd numbers. And there's a, whoops, there's a quick and easy birthday card for somebody. Does anybody have a birthday this month? Did anybody, oh, polished pink would have looked neat too. Barb, thanks for sharing with your daughter. I'm so appreciative of that. All right, so there is a really easy technique. I've kind of got a mess here because I pulled out so many stamp pads and all that. Let me get this out of the way for you. And I'll spread out the cards so you can see them. I'll leave that there. So these are the first two that we made, the fall cards on the very vanilla card bases. And then this happy birthday one with the purples and mango melody. All right, would anybody like to win a card? Now the bigger question is, who will try this technique? Will you try it today? Will you try it this week? I hope you will, and I hope you take that a step further by sharing what you make with all of us on my Stampin' Peace VIP group. And if you're not part of the VIP group, you just, um, in Facebook, search Stampin' Peace VIP group. There are three simple questions to answer. I just want to make sure that the people coming into that group are truly stampers and paper crafters. Um, not spammy, 
things going on, but you answer those and I accept, and then you can participate in anything we do there. So, and that's a good place for you to share um, your work too, because I enjoy seeing what all of you make. Lori says, not this week. You must have a busy week, but you will try it soon. That's awesome. I'm so glad. 